Guinea-Bissau, officially the Republic of Guinea-Bissau, is a country in West Africa that covers with an estimated population of 1,604,528. It borders Senegal to the north and Guinea to the southeast. Guinea-Bissau was once part of the Kingdom of Cabu, as well as part of the Mali Empire, parts of this kingdom persisted until the 18th century while a few others were under some rule by the Portuguese Empire since the 16th century. In the 19th century, it was colonized as Portuguese Guinea. Upon independence, declared in 1973 and recognized in 1974, the name of its capital, Bissau, was added to the country's name to prevent confusion with Guinea formerly French Guinea. Guinea-Bissau has a history of political instability since independence, and only one elected president Jose Mario Vaz has successfully served a full five-year term, only about 2% of the population speaks Portuguese, the official language, as a first language, and 33% speak it as a second language. However, Creole is the national language and also considered the language of unity, according to a 2012 study. 54% of the population speak Creole as a first language and about 52% speak it as a second language. The remainder speak a variety of native African languages. There are diverse religions in Guinea-Bissau with no one religion having a majority. In 2008, the CIA World Factbook estimated that the population was about 40% Muslim, 22% Christian. 15% animist, and 18% unspecified or other, while a Pew Research survey in 2010 indicates about 62% Christian, 38% Muslim, and 0% for traditional African religions and unaffiliated. Guinea-Bissau was once part of the Kingdom of Cabu, part of the Mali Empire in the 16th century. Parts of this kingdom persisted until the 18th century. Other parts of the territory in the current country were considered by the Portuguese as part of their empire. Portuguese Guinea was known as the Slave Coast, as it was a major area for the exportation of African slaves by Europeans to the Western Hemisphere. Early reports of Europeans reaching this area include those of the Venetian Alvis Kadarmosto's voyage of 1455, the 1479 to 1480 voyage by Flemish French trader Eustache de la Fosse, and Diago Cao. In the 1480s, this Portuguese explorer reached the Congo River and the lands of the Congo, setting up the foundations of modern Angola some 4,200 kilometers down the African coast from Guinea-Bissau, although the rivers and coast of this area were among the first places colonized by the Portuguese, who set up trading posts in the 16th century. They did not explore the interior until the 19th century. The local African rulers in Guinea, some of whom prospered greatly from the slave trade, controlled the inland trade and did not allow the Europeans into the interior. They kept them in the fortified coastal settlements where the trading took place. African communities that fought back against slave traders also distrusted European adventurers and would-be settlers. The Portuguese in Guinea were largely restricted to the ports of Bissau and Caché. A small number of European settlers established isolated farms along Bissau's inland rivers. But by the 19th century the Portuguese were sufficiently secure in Bissau to regard the neighboring coastline as their own special territory, also up north in part of present South Senegal. An armed rebellion, begun in 1956 by the African Party for the Independence of Guinea and Cape Verde Pague, under the leadership of Amilcar Cabral gradually consolidated its hold on the then Portuguese Guinea. Unlike guerrilla movements in other Portuguese colonies, the PEG rapidly extended its military control over large portions of the territory, aided by the jungle-like terrain, its easily reached borderlines with neighboring allies, and large quantities of arms from Cuba, China, the Soviet Union, and left-leaning African countries. Cuba also agreed to supply artillery experts, doctors, and technicians. The PEG even managed to acquire a significant anti-aircraft capability in order to defend itself against aerial attack. By 1973, the PEG was in control of many parts of Guinea, although the movement suffered a setback in January 1973 when Cabral was assassinated. 
Independence 1973. Independence was unilaterally declared on the 24th of September 1973, which is now celebrated as the country's Independence Day, a public holiday. Recognition became universal following the 25th of April 1974 socialist-inspired military coup in Portugal, which overthrew Lisbon's Estado Novo regime. Luís Cabral, brother of Amilcar and co-founder of PAIC, was appointed the first president of Guinea-Bissau. Following independence, the PEG killed thousands of local Guinean soldiers who had fought alongside the Portuguese army against the guerrillas. Some escaped to settle in Portugal or other African nations. One of the massacres occurred in the town of Bissora. In 1980 the PEG acknowledged in its newspaper No Pincher dated 29 November 1980 that many Guinean soldiers had been executed and buried in unmarked collective graves in the woods of Cumra, Portugal, and Mansaba. The country was controlled by a revolutionary council until 1984. The first multi-party elections were held in 1994. An army uprising in May 1998 led to the Guinea-Bissau civil war and the president's ousting in June 1999. Elections were held again in 2000, and Kumba Iala was elected president. In September 2003, a military coup was conducted. The military arrested Iala on the charge of being unable to solve the problems. After being delayed several times, legislative elections were held in March 2004. A mutiny of military factions in October 2004 resulted in the death of the head of the armed forces and caused widespread unrest. The area is. In June 2005, presidential elections were held for the first time since the coup that deposed Iala. Iala returned as the candidate for the PRS claiming to be the legitimate president of the country, but the election was won by former President João Bernardo Vieira, deposed in the 1999 coup. Vieira beat Malam Bakaisana in a runoff election. Sanu initially refused to concede, claiming that tampering and electoral fraud occurred in two constituencies including the capital, Bissau. Despite reports of arms entering the country prior to the election and some disturbances during campaigning, including attacks on government offices by unidentified gunmen, foreign election monitors described the 2005 election overall as calm and organized. Three years later, PEG won a strong parliamentary majority, with 67 of 100 seats, in the parliamentary election held in November 2008. In November 2008, President Vieira's official residence was attacked by members of the armed forces, killing a guard but leaving the president unharmed. On 2 March 2009, however, Vieira was assassinated by what preliminary reports indicated to be a group of soldiers avenging the death of the head of Joint Chiefs of Staff, General Batista Tagmnawai, who had been killed in an explosion the day before. Vieira's death did not trigger widespread violence, but there were signs of turmoil in the country, according to the advocacy group Swiss Peace. Military leaders in the country pledged to respect the constitutional order of succession. National Assembly Speaker Raimundo Pereira was appointed as an interim president until a nationwide election on 28 June 2009. It was won by Malam Bakaisano of the PAIC, against Kumba Iala as the presidential candidate of the PRS. On 9 January 2012, President Sana died of complications from diabetes, and Pereira was again appointed as an interim president. On the evening of 12 April 2012, members of the country's military staged a coup d'etat and arrested the interim president and a leading presidential candidate. Former Vice Chief of Staff, General Momadou Takaruma, assumed control of the country in the transitional period and started negotiations with opposition parties. Politics Guinea-Bissau is a republic. In the past, the government had been highly centralized. Multi-party governance was not established until mid-1991. The president is the head of state and the prime minister is the head of government. Since 1974, no president had successfully served a full five-year term, until recently when José Mario Vaz ended his five-year term in June 24, 2019. 
at the legislative level, a unicameral assembly i a national popular national people's assembly is made up of 100 members. They are popularly elected from multi-member constituencies to serve a four-year term. The judicial system is headed by a tribunal supremo de justiza supreme court, made up of nine justices appointed by the president, they serve at the pleasure of the president. The two main political parties are the PAG African Party for the Independence of Guinea and Cape Verde and the PRS Party for Social Renewal. There are more than 20 minor parties. Foreign Relations Guinea-Bissau follows a non-aligned foreign policy and seeks friendly and cooperative relations with a wide variety of states and organizations. Guinea-Bissau is a founding member state of the community of Portuguese language countries CPLP, also known as the Lusophone Commonwealth, and International Organization and Political Association of Lusophone Nations across four continents where Portuguese is an official language. Military. A 2008 estimate put the size of the Guinea-Bissau armed forces at around 4,000 personnel. In 2018, Guinea-Bissau signed the UN Treaty on the Prohibition of Nuclear Weapons. Administrative Divisions. Guinea-Bissau is divided into eight regions and one autonomous sector. These, in turn, are subdivided into 37 sectors. The regions are Geography. Guinea-Bissau is bordered by Senegal to the north and Guinea to the south and east, with the Atlantic Ocean to its west. It lies mostly between latitudes 11 degrees and 13 degrees north a small area, is south of 11 degrees, and longitudes 13 degrees and 17 degrees west. At, the country is larger in size than Taiwan or Belgium. The highest point is its terrain is mostly low coastal plains with swamps of the Guinean mangroves rising to the Guinean forests of Anna Mosaic in the east. Climate Guinea-Bissau is warm all year round with mild temperature fluctuations, it averages. The average rainfall for Bissau is, although this is almost entirely accounted for during the rainy season which falls between June and September, October, from December through April. The country experiences drought. Environmental problems. Severe environmental problems include deforestation, soil erosion, overgrazing, and overfishing. The economy depends mainly on agriculture, fish, cashew nuts, and ground nuts are its major exports. A long period of political instability has resulted in depressed economic activity, deteriorating social conditions, and increased macroeconomic imbalances. It takes longer on average to register a new business in Guinea-Bissau 233 days or about 33 weeks than in any other country in the world except Suriname. Guinea-Bissau has started to show some economic advances after a pact of stability was signed by the main political parties of the country, leading to an IMF-backed structural reform program. The key challenges for the country in the period ahead are to achieve fiscal discipline, rebuild public administration, improve the economic climate for private investment, and promote economic diversification. After the country became independent from Portugal in 1974 due to the Portuguese colonial war and the Carnation Revolution, the rapid exodus of the Portuguese civilian, military, and political authorities resulted in considerable damage to the country's economic infrastructure, social order, and standard of living. After several years of economic downturn and political instability, in 1997, Guinea-Bissau entered the CFA franc monetary system, bringing about some internal monetary stability. The civil war that took place in 1998 and 1999, and a military coup in September 2003 again disrupted economic activity, leaving a substantial part of the economic and social infrastructure in ruins and intensifying the already widespread poverty. Following the parliamentary elections in March 2004 and presidential elections in July 2005, the country is trying to recover from the long period of instability. Despite a still fragile political situation, beginning around 2005, drug traffickers based in Latin America began to use Guinea-Bissau, along with several neighboring West African nations, as a transshipment point to Europe for cocaine. The nation was described by a United Nations official as being at risk for becoming a narco-state. 
the government and the military have done little to stop drug trafficking, which increased after the 2012 coup d'etat. The government of Guinea-Bissau continues to be ravaged by illegal drug distribution. According to the Week magazine, Guinea-Bissau is a member of the Organization for the Harmonization of Business Law in Africa OHADA. Society. Demographics. According to, Guinea-Bissau's population was in, compared to 518,000 in 1950. The proportion of the population below the age of 15 in 2010 was 41.3%, 55. 4 percent were aged between 15 and 65 years of age, while 3. 3 percent were aged 65 years or older. Ethnic groups. The population of Guinea-Bissau is ethnically diverse and has many distinct languages, customs, and social structures. Bissau Guineans can be divided into the following ethnic groups, Fula and the Mandinka speaking people, who comprise the largest portion of the population and are concentrated in the north and northeast. Balantu and Papal people, who live in the southern coastal regions, and Manjiko and Mankana, who occupy the central and northern coastal areas. Most of the remainder are mestizos of mixed Portuguese and African descent, including a Cape Verdean minority. Portuguese natives comprise a very small percentage of Bissau Guineans. After Guinea Bissau gained independence, most of the Portuguese nationals left the country. The country has a tiny Chinese population. These include traders and merchants of mixed Portuguese and Chinese ancestry from the former Asian Portuguese colony of Macau. Major cities. Main cities in Guinea-Bissau include Languages. Despite being a small country Guinea-Bissau has several ethnic groups which are very distinct from each other, with their own cultures and languages. This is due to Guinea-Bissau being a refugee and migration territory within Africa. Colonization and miscegenation brought Portuguese and the Portuguese Creole. The Creole or Creolo, although perceived as one of the national languages of Guinea-Bissau since independence, standard Portuguese is spoken mostly as a second language, with few native speakers and often confined to the intellectual and political elites. It is the language of government and national communication as a legacy of colonial rule. Portuguese is the only language with official status. Schooling from primary to university levels is conducted in Portuguese although only 67% of children have access to any formal education. Data suggested the number of Portuguese speakers ranges from 11 to 15%. In the latest census 2009-27, of the population claimed to speak non-coralized Portuguese 46. 3% of city dwellers and 10. 6% of the rural population, respectively. The Portuguese Creole is spoken by 44% which is effectively the national language of communication among distinct groups for most of the population. The Creole is still expanding, and it is understood by the vast majority of the population. However, decriminalization processes are occurring. Due to undergoing interference from standard Portuguese and the Creole forms a continuum of varieties with the standard language, the most distant are Basilects and the closer ones, are Creolects. A post-Creole continuum exists in Guinea-Bissau and Creole have soft Creole variety being closer to the Portuguese language norm. Most Portuguese and Mestizo speakers also have one of the African languages and Creole as additional languages. Ethnic African languages are not discouraged, in any situation, despite their lower prestige. These languages are the link between individuals of the same ethnic background and daily used in villages, between neighbors or friends, traditional and religious ceremonies, and also used in contact between the urban and rural populations. However, none of these languages are dominant in Guinea-Bissau. Religion. In 2010, a Pew Research survey found that Christianity is adhered to by 62% of the country's population, Islam by 38% and attributed 0% for both traditional African religions and unaffiliated. According to another Pew report, concerning religious identity among Muslims, it was determined that in Guinea-Bissau there is no prevailing sectarian identity. Under this same category were other sub-Saharan countries like Tanzania, Uganda, Liberia, Nigeria, and Cameroon. 
other nations around the world claimed to be either predominantly just Muslim, mix of Sunni and Shia, or predominantly Sunni. Page 30. This Pew research also stated that countries in this specific study that declared to not have any clear dominant sectarian identity were mostly concentrated in sub Saharan Africa. Another Pew report, The Future of World Religions, predicts that in 2050 Islam will become the dominant religion of Guinea Bissau. Many residents practice syncretic forms of Islamic and Christian faiths, combining their practices with traditional African beliefs. Muslims dominate the north and east, while Christians dominate the south and coastal regions. The Roman Catholic Church claims most of the Christian community. Health, education. Education is compulsory from the age of 7 to 13. Preschool education for children between 3 and 6 years of age is optional and in its early stages. There are five levels of education, preschool, elemental and complementary basic education, general and complementary secondary education, general secondary education, technical and professional teaching, and higher education university and non-universities. Basic education is under reform and now forms a single cycle, comprising six years of education. Secondary education is widely available and there are two cycles 7th to 9th class and 10th to 11th class. Professional education in public institutions is non-operational, however private school offerings opened, including the Centro de Forma São João Bosco since 2004 and the Centro de Forma São Luís Inácio Lula da Silva since 2011, child labor is very common. Non-formal education is centered on community schools and the teaching of adults. Conflicts. Usually, the many different ethnic groups in Guinea-Bissau coexist peacefully, but when conflicts do erupt, they tend to revolve around access to land. Culture. Media. Music. The music of Guinea-Bissau is usually associated with the polyrhythmic gum genre, the country's primary musical export. However, civil unrest and other factors have combined over the years to keep gum and other genres out of mainstream audiences, even in generally syncretist African countries. The kabazoo is the primary musical instrument of Guinea-Bissau, and is used in extremely swift and rhythmically complex dance music. Lyrics are almost always in Guinea-Bissau Creole, a Portuguese-based Creole language, and are often humorous and topical revolving around current events and controversies. The word gumb is sometimes used generically to refer to any music of the country, although it most specifically refers to a unique style that fuses about 10 of the country's folk music traditions. Tina and Dingu are other popular genres, while extant folk traditions include ceremonial music used in funerals, initiations, and other rituals, as well as Balantabrosco and Kasand. Mandinga Jambadon, and the Kandia sound of the Bisagos Islands. Cuisine. Rice is a staple in the diet of residents near the coast and millet a staple in the interior. Fruits and vegetables are commonly eaten along with cereal grains. The Portuguese encouraged peanut production. Vigna subterranea bambara groundnut and macrotloma jecarpum horsa groundnut are also grown. Black-eyed peas are also part of the diet, palm oil is harvested, common dishes include soups and stews, common ingredients include yams, sweet potato, cassava, onion, tomato, and plantain, spices, peppers, and chilies are used in cooking, including a fromomum melegata seeds guinea pepper. Film Floregums is an internationally renowned film director, his most famous film is Nafala. Gums's Mortu Nega Death Denied 1988 was the first fiction film and the second feature film ever made in Guinea-Bissau. The first feature film was Nteradu, by director Umba in 1987. At Fespaco 1989, Mortu Nega won the prestigious Umaganda Prize. In 1992, Gums directed Uju Azul Dionta, which was screened in the UN Certain Regard section at the 1992 Cannes Film Festival. Gums has also served on the boards of many Africa-centric film festivals. The actress Bebe Tidaso was born in Bafata, Guinea-Bissau. Sports Football is the most popular sport in Guinea-Bissau. 
the Guinea-Bissau national football team is controlled by the Federação de Futebol de Guinea-Bissau. They are a member of the Confederation of African Football CAF and FIFA. Other football clubs include Desportiva Calel, FC Catacumba, FC Catacumba Sao Domingos, FC Cupolu Ugabu, FC Jaruf, FC Prabis, and